Greetings, I'm Shad, and this is another SketchUp Speed 3D modeling video. And of course, I'm modeling a sword, but this time it's a very fancy sword. Indeed, it's a fantasy sword. And you will notice that I've stepped over that line of practicality in the design of this sword for the sake of aesthetic appeal. And I do that in fantasy, though I have tried in every area that I can to try and keep this sword as functional as possible, but when there was a decision between form and function or looks, well, I generally would choose looks unless it was completely ridiculous. Now, this sword is actually an older design of mine. I've, I drew this original picture a long time ago, and it's always been one of my favourites. So, of course, when I've come to the time where I want to actually do a 3D model of a fancy fantasy sword, I choose my favourite design that I've done in the past, which is this one. And I mean, I could have done a new one, but this is my favourite, and I'm happy to work with it. And so, of course, I just start off making a 2D image or silhouette of the sword to, to get the proportions and the design the way I wanted. And you also notice that I changed the design a little bit from the original drawing. Now, I originally designed this sword for one of my fictional characters. He's actually one of my superheroes. I, I like to make superheroes, you know. He is a modern paladin and kind of fills the role in my own fictional superhero universe of, say, what, Captain America or Batman. He doesn't have actual superpowers. He's just that good. And, of course, he certainly gets a, a lot of help from a magical enchanted sword. And so the name of this sword, until a better name comes to my mind, or this name actually grows on me and I end up liking it more, but at the moment, the name of it is Regalium, and it is a very powerful magical sword. So, what can it do? Well, there's a couple of cool little things that this sword can do, but of course, it's, uh, for all intents and purposes, it's indestructible. Uh, no one has come across anything that can actually damage it. And it can chop through most things. Having said that, like, it wouldn't be able to chop through, say, adamantium, or other fictional kind of super materials that are supposed to be indestructible. So anything that is not supposed to be indestructible, this sword can chop through like it's butter. But if something else is meant to be indestructible, well then they just would kind of hit and yeah, they can't go through one another. And that's kind of stock standard for, you know, really magical, powerful swords. But still, being able to chop through almost everything is pretty darn awesome. But something else that I really like about this sword, and this is a unique feature, and that is that this sword can actually increase and decrease its size, its blade length, and also handle length. And so this sword can actually uh, turn into a polearm just by the blade shortening and the handle lengthening. 
and I've put up a picture on DeviantArt that shows the standard lengths that this sword can adopt. And it's actually kind of cool, so my character, his name is Tristan, he's the superhero guy that uses this sword. He can just hold out the sword and point it to someone, and the blade can extend and shoot forward like a bullet and then retract, and suddenly the person has just been skewered. And the length that this blade can actually magically extend to? Well, at the moment I've kind of decided that the blade can extend to up to around 100 meters. And so what that means is Tristan, the character who uses this sword, can actually chop skyscrapers in half. It's just a very cool kind of feature. Now the handle can also extend to around 100 meters as well, and you would think that there's not many practical circumstances for, you know, that length to be in use. The blade, maybe, you know, if you want to chop a mountain or a building in half, he can actually do that, which I reckon is pretty cool. As to the handle, well, he can use it to kind of knock people out from a distance. The pummel will just fly forward, and if you <laughs> Now that's a way to end someone rightly. The ultimate pummel shot from 100 meters away. Oh, and that is because the speed of extension of the blade and handle is almost instant. The owner of the sword simply wills or envisions the length that they want and BAM, it happens. But also Tristan, he can use the extension of the handle to lift him up to greater height. So he'll just hold on to the cross guard and the handle will shoot into the ground and then he will of course be get flung upwards and uh, so there's actually a small practical use that he can use for the extension of the handle as well. And those are really the main magical properties of this sword. So it's not like overpowered in the sense that it can, you know, destroy worlds. It has very defined and limited parameters of what it's capable of doing. But because everything is so defined, it has rules for how this sword works. There are fun inventive ways that it can be used. So like Tristan, he can jump down in like a, you know, a huge group group of people and just spin the sword in a full circle extending the blade to however long it needs to be and chop every single one around him in half. Eh, it's a bit violent isn't it? But effective! So the sword kind of becomes like a long range weapon in this sense. Now I've made the cross guard very pointy and so that is of course for cross guard strikes and particularly when the blade adopts its pole arm form, those side cross guards actually become like a big pick or scythe kind of attacks, which is another cool little feature as well. Now I really like the blade profile that I've done here. You'll notice that it has two kind of forms. That has the, uh, the profile of the kind of patterned part of the blade, and that's also as short as the blade can go. And so when the blade retracts and goes in, it goes as short as the length of that pattern. It can't go any shorter. But then after the pattern, you have that different kind of blade profile, which I feel looks pretty cool.
Now, you might think that the crossguard is too wide or long. And you're right, it would be. The, the crossguard is probably a little too big for uh, being completely practical, but what I did to try and fix some of that is make it very thin as well. Thin being along the same plane as the direction of the blade. So it's thin on that angle, but looking at it from a bird's eye view, it's quite thick and big. Well, it looks like that, but I've made it to be very, very thin on the side specifically to reduce weight. And so the actual thickness of the crossguard on the side, well, there's kind of two thicknesses. There's the thickness of the crossguard, including the raised pattern that you see me put in on the blade. So the blade has kind of a raised pattern, which will end up being gold. And then there's the actual solid part of that crossguard underneath that raised pattern. And the solid part is a millimeter thick, and the raised parts on either end are also a millimeter thick. And so total, three millimeters, but that additional two millimeters that come from the raised pattern is mostly hollow. It's it's a rib-like pattern, so it's actually not adding much weight. Of course, if it's pure gold, it would. Ah, but that's another magical feature about the sword that I neglected to mention. My mistake. The sword weighs around a ton, literally a ton, for anyone to pick up except for the owner. So it's a bit like Thor's hammer, except it actually has a specific weight that I'm assigning to it, so you don't have all that confusion that Thor's hammer does. Can you pick up Thor's hammer if you're in an elevator, if you're a royal, you know, all that funny kind of stuff that people talk about in regards to Thor's hammer? Well, no, this sword weighs a legitimate ton for anyone trying to pick it up who is not the wielder. But for the owner, for Tristan, the sword actually is incredibly light. And that, of course, makes it a very dangerous sword because, you know, it can be swung around so fast and also gives me a bit of license in the areas of the sword where you think would create too much weight. Because it's a magical sword and I can just say it's lighter because magic. But if this sword was to be made in real life, well, I think it wouldn't be too heavy either because I've tried to use some sound principles in its design, make it as practical as I can, as well as making it look as cool as I can make it look. And yes, I certainly had to bring all the uh, tricks that I've learnt to, in SketchUp to bear in making this model. I think every single trick I know I had to use in putting it together. And then some more, actually I had to make up some more because SketchUp is a very fiddly program. But it gets the job done. And for being free, like I've mentioned before, that's just phenomenal. So the character who uses this sword, his name, like I mentioned, is Tristan. He is a modern paladin. And I've actually written a decently detailed uh, 
backstory for him, but the most recent drawing I've done of him isn't completed, and I might get around to colouring it someday. And so Tristan doesn't really have any superpowers, except for some auras he gets from being, a, you know, a holy paladin. And a couple of other things, he doesn't age anymore, that's uh, one of the things that I say paladins get in the modern day, because paladins have become so rare, they, they basically are non-existent. In my superhero setting, the level of dedication and righteousness that people need is so rare that few people ever become paladins, so whatever mystical force gives paladins their unique abilities kind of added in another one, and that is that they don't age and they can't get sick or contract any diseases or anything like that. In fact, the concept of paladins in my superhero universe, and why have I made a superhero universe? Because superheroes are cool. I love superheroes, I like writing, so of course I'm gonna make my own. And I'll probably use it in a roleplay setting in the future, and it's just there for whatever I want. But I'll probably write something with it in the future. But anyway, in my superhero universe, uh, the concept of paladins are quite prominent. In fact, I have a superhero called Paladin. And she's a pretty cool superhero, she's one of the main ones. And Tristan, his backstory is very interwoven, of course, with my superhero Paladin. They have a bit of a, a history, even though Tristan is over 100 years old, because I remember that he doesn't age anymore. But anyway, that's a little bit about Tristan and his backstory. And his, so yes, he's the guy that uses this sword, and uh, I really like him. And of course, I like this sword as well. It's been one of my favourite, and it's turned out pretty good. As always, I've put up a full resolution image of this sword on my DeviantArt page with a couple of touch-ups I did in Photoshop just for lighting and other things. And I've also put up the image of the Regalium, which is this sword, in its different forms it can adopt because it can alter its length, its size. And so that picture is also there for your enjoyment and reference. Thank you for watching and until next time, farewell!